Is this thing on? Hello? I think it's on, yeah. Hello everybody, good day to you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you guys are here. Uh, I know, I am super glad to be here. Uh, we're hanging out in a, there's the noise. We're hanging out in a something something Prius. I think it's a 2012 uh, customer states that uh, while they're at a brake light, they're hearing some kind of a buzzing noise from the brake pedal area. Uh, we just actually caught the noise here. Um, there's actually a couple complaints on this. We need to go test drive it. Uh, one of the complaints was that buzzing bit of bu uh, business that we just heard down yonder. And the other, uh, they complained of a very loud and harsh rattle coming from the steering column slash dash area when going over bumps. So we're gonna back this thing out of the shop real quick, like go uh, take it for a quick test drive and see if we cannot recreate and emulate these uh, other conditions. And then we can uh, pinpoint them and narrow them down and see exactly what we're gonna have to do uh, to get this electronic Prius hybrid vehicle uh, back up to the correct operating condition. Here, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna bring the brake pedal depressor with me. That way while we're out and about, if we can get that, uh, that brake pedal buzz business uh, to restart, we can hold the pedal down with, uh, with the tool here and then jump out and see if we can't identify exactly which component is uh, making that noise. I believe this thing has some kind of electronic braking assist motor, and when that motor is actuated, that's what we're, uh, that's what we're hearing here. So let's go ahead and get this out into the real world real quick and park and brake off, right? No. Let's reverse. I'm gonna have a hard time uh, diagnosing this when I can't even figure out how to turn the brakes off. Ruh -roh. Oh wait, it's doing the buzzy thing. Ah, it stopped. Scheisse. Not hearing it just yet. There's that steering column clickage. Let's go over some bumps real fast with some speed and listen for that steering column noise as well. Let's see what we get here. Drive. There's our little brake buzz again. this to keep doing that. Stop. Parking brakes on. It's in gear. Conditions are present for the buzzy noise. Let's see what it is, what it is, what it is. Oh, I think it stopped. Come on killing me Prius it either stopped or I can only hear it from inside of the cabin what is that Yeah, I'm not hearing it out here. Barely. I hear the meh, 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 But it appears to be loudest inside. But where is it? I don't feel it. Very, very strange, guys. Does anybody know about these? This is very strange. I hear the buzzy noise, but I don't hear it. So it only does it when we're on the brake, and I don't really hear it outside of the cabin. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's drive around some and listen for the uh, steering column noise next. 
All right, let's back this thing up some. I want to drive around to the parking lot here and listen for that steering column noise at the same time. There's two noises we're looking for in this car. One of them's a, a rattly column. Yeah, that's pretty gnarly. And then the other, of course, is a little brake buzz that we heard. Oh yeah, all kinds of rattles in that steering column. Uh, sounds like the lower column, like the intermediate shaft. I think what I need to do is swing this thing into the shop and get some panels disconnected down below so we can get our heads in a little bit deeper and see if there's any play in steering column stuff. And we need to actuate these brakes to figure out what component is coming on. I'm not sure if there's like an accumulator or some kind of electric motor assist for uh, regenerative or hybrid braking, but I know that whatever is causing that is, uh, well, that's an abnormal noise. So is this rattle and uh, needs to be looked into. Um, they may be related. I can't see how at this time, but I'm also not the Prius master, but we're gonna do some learning and some investigating. We're gonna find out what's going on uh, under the dash in this uh, particular Prius here. So what I'll do is we're gonna nudge her in, throw the parking brake on. I'm going to, again, use the brake pedal depressor to apply these service brakes. I'm gonna block the wheels. And we're just gonna let this thing hang out here until it starts making the noise and then we're gonna go down below and take a look at what the noise could be. In the meantime, while we're waiting for it to act up and do its thing, I'm gonna start taking off these uh, components uh, of the uh, steering column here so we can see exactly what's happening down under the dash. Okay, a couple eight millimeter fasteners down here on this panel. Let's get this thing uh, unbolted, disconnected, and pulled down out of the way here. Come here, panel. There we go. We've got a couple little electrical connectors here. Disconnect these guys. Pull that one out. And another one down here. I think these are just like a TPMS reset buttons. Yeah, nothing of major concern. Set this thing aside. We're just trying to get some access to uh, the column area so I can see what's going on down here. So the buzzing appears to have stopped. So we're gonna switch gears and just look for that steering column rattle first. I want to pull the shroud off this column here. Maybe we can get a good visual on the U-joints and whatnot. I don't hear any noise coming out of anything up top. Uh, I also understand there's a condition where we can add some grease to uh, one of the bearings on this column. And I believe that that uh, operation's already been performed. So I don't think that's the correct path to uh, identifying this issue anyway so i've got the the brake off right now the hands up here on the steering column and we're gonna just try to manipulate this column some and see if we can't hear that uh noise that uh, we observed earlier it's gonna be harder to do while we're not driving but i think uh might be able to find it here i believe it's in this intermediate shaft Something's poking me. Shh. You're shaking the column. Yeah, real tough to say. Let me try to put some, uh, like a load on it. I'm gonna hang on to the column. And then with my other hand, I'm gonna turn the column. Yeah, I hear some clicking. feel it. Let's look up a little bit here.
Very odd. Okay. All right, so real quick, this uh, intermediate shaft looks like it's held on with these two collars, uh, one to the lower shaft and one up there going into the motor assist. Uh, I just want to real quick apply some, some torque to these bolts here just to make sure that they're tight. I don't think that's going to be the issue here, but just a slight bit of play <clears throat> could be causing this issue. So reapply some torque to these bolts. I think someone has been uh, has been in here before and there's a chance they're just not as tight as they, they need to be. So we're just gonna double check that just to make sure that we just simply don't have some play on the splines here. And yeah, these feel pretty tight. I don't think that's gonna be the issue here. Okay, give that one a good tug. All right, yeah, that's probably not it, but it was worth checking. Now I've been burned on something like this before on a Hyundai where I thought the steering shaft was the cause of the noise and it turns out it was the little uh, gear mesh device up there at the motor, there's an electric assist motor. Turns out that was actually my issue. Um, never heard of one doing that on a Prius before though, but Anything's possible, I suppose. Okay, time to uh, start taking things apart. I wanna see if there's a steering bushing motor uh, similar to what the Hyundais have on this column. So we're just gonna take it apart until I find the issue. Over here beating around the bush, looking for stuff that I'm not finding. It's annoying me. Come off, airbag. <laughs> Lunchtime time clock. Do 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 not right now time clock I'm busy trying to get a Prius apart. I need to get up there to that motor on top of the steering gear. So this ought to be fun. I'm gonna have to just like pry the Prius. We're getting somewhere. More connections and switches and stuff. Get these guys disconnected. There's a panel. Okay, I think I'm trying to sort of get somewhere here. I've got the uh, the lower knee airbag disconnected. It was held on with a bolt here, 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 and here. I've got all four of those off. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this airbag and just get it out of the way here. And then we're gonna work on uh, dropping this column down ever so slightly in attempt to uh, to gain access to that motor that's back there. And then we can take that motor off and then determine whether or not the little uh, bushing inside has disintegrated, uh, similar to what we have seen on the Hyundai vehicles. So here we'll set this airbag down over there in the uh, pile of parts. And now we're sorta getting somewhere, I think. Yeah, I can see the motor assembly here, but looks like I'm gonna have to drop the whole column down uh, quite far actually to uh, gain access to that actual electric motor up top. So here, let's just give, give this thing kind of a tug here. We'll separate the, uh, the bezel around the column. Try to sneak this thing out. I think it might be bolted in or something like that. Hmm. There's something hanging on to it. Here, let's pull more dash pieces off. Oh, more dash pieces. Here we go. Just gonna take the whole shebang apart, aren't we? More dash pieces. Things just falling apart, isn't it? That's a Prius thing. They come apart like Legos. Okay. It's the bottom of the bezel. And the top of the bezel uh, should be free here. There we go. It was kind of tabbed in with those little front tabs there. Set that guy aside. And now we've got at least access to a couple of the fasteners that are holding the column up to the uh, primary structure. So we need to take these guys loose and then drop this whole unit down uh, ever so slightly. Okay. 
12 mil socket for the win. There's one on that side, one over here. Okay, column is starting to come down. Slowly, you don't want to drop it. All right, we've got a some kind of a pivot point here. So I want to go back on the back side of this column and see what else is uh, hanging on to this. Okay, I'm working one large bolt that runs across and kind of serves as like a pivot point uh, under this column here. That's what we were getting hung up on. So I'm just trying to walk that thing out right now. Got a little uh, miniature ratchet wrench here. And we're just uh, chipping away at that little bolt there, trying to get it to come out. Uh, once that's out, I uh, should be able to drop this column down enough to get access to that motor that's up there. This is a very tight squeeze where you are uh, Definitely in close quarters of combat here. Quarter turn at a time. Yeah, she's moving now. Good. Here she comes. Beautiful, okay. So now we've just got that one nut hanging up on us here. And once that guy's free, I should be able to drop this column down to a, with a manageable working height, so to speak. And we can see what's up with that electric motor. Okay, so bear with me here. I can't film and work at the same time. So you guys just hang out over there while I try to lower this down. To Something manageable here to work with. Pretty close. Hmm. You know, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this entire column out. We're just gonna bring it over to the bench. That's probably gonna be easier, I think, in the long run. So I need to get this whole wiring harness business right here disconnected. And then we're just going to disconnect the steering shaft right down there. Just pull this entire unit out. That's uh, that's going to be the path of least resistance here, I think. Got to say, I didn't really think I was going to be uh, pulling airbags and stuff out of a car today, out of a Prius. Didn't seem like that was uh, where the path was going to lead me. But as it turns out, you never know what you're going to find. So this is what it is. Go. So I think I think we're fully disconnected here. Unless there's some power wires that I'm missing for that motor, and I think there are. Unless these are it right here. Well, let's take the bolt out and find out what uh, what it does when I drop it down. It's either gonna come down or it's not, right? Here, you guys go back to your observation post. I'm gonna grab these nuts here, drop this down. And do I have power wires dangling? Sure do. Uh, let's find a, I don't feel a connector here. So how do I disconnect the motor? What's his problem? Okay. Okay, well this is cute. So see these uh, the set of wires right here? These wires, they run back, up, and then over some section of the column, and then plug in somewhere back there against the firewall where I cannot reach. So my plan of just pulling this column out entirely in order to service it has also uh, proved to not be exactly as effective as I wanted. So I'm going to alter my plan again, since we're dropped down this far, and I can at least get to the two fasteners on this motor we're just going to take this motor out right here where it sits and i'm not going to worry about those fasteners so i'm i'm adapting my plan again to uh kind of do this the easiest way possible so what i need to do now is just get back in there 
Looks like we got a 12 mil bolt. And another 12. And I hear that buzzy noise again. But we're just uh, we're gonna pull those two 12s out, separate this motor from the column, and then take a look at that little uh, gear mesh business inside and see if that's the cause of our uh, of our rattle grindy bit of business. I really hope it is because I'd like to not having or like to have not done all this work for no reason. That would bother me slightly. Okay, I've got a 12 mil coming in. Looks like there's just two bolts that secure this motor to the column. Pull these units out. Uh, come on, you hear me, Bolt? No space in here for power tools. This is all going to be done uh, with some manual operations. Oh, there we go. That one. That one turned. One more in the back. Looks like the motor's coming loose. Okay. There's a bolt, and here's a bolt. It's just these two. Yeah, so that thing wiggled some, it moved. We're on the right track here, folks. Unless I take this off and find uh, zero carnage inside, and in which case I'm I'll be highly upset that I did all this for, well, nothing, actually. I'll be very upset if I did this for nothing. Okay, there's our motor. That's the drive gear, and, oh, I think we got it. Hang on here. Let me get to a reasonable angle here. You can look down inside of this gear case. I see some some carnage and some destruction uh, taking place. Oh yeah. Let me prop this thing up. There we go. That's a little better. Yep. So it looks like there's a little gear mesh component inside of here and it's coming apart. There's some of the gear. There's a green plastic insert inside of this unit. And we can see all the little plastic pieces right here. See all that? So this thing's been flying apart, rattling around. So now there's, a, there's excessive play between the assist motor gear and then the driven gear on the actual column here. This is our issue. So I need to find that little starry gear mesh looking device and get that guy replaced cool good find got it that's a success i'm happy with that to the parts catalog okay we're going on a field trip i'm gonna run down to the toyota dealership begin engine stopping sequence yeah we're gonna go down to the toyota dealership and i've got to pick up those little uh little star bushing bit of business or whatever that we found that's broken and we'll come back and get that thing tossed back together so let's uh go ahead and get out of here and hit the row ad real quick toyota's not very far from here it's uh actually across the street from my old dealership so we're just gonna head over into downtown uh grab that uh grab those bushings i brought the old ones with me they're in my pocket just in case see i called parts over there at yoda and they said that their diagram does actually not show uh, these particular components uh, for that steering column motor, which I find is quite odd. I, uh, I found the part number for these guys on the interwebs, and I crossed that over with uh, the people at Toyota Parts, and they say that, yeah, that's a part, and we do have it, but that fits a, uh, I think like a 17 to 19 something, something or another, but uh, clearly, it also goes inside of my Prius. So we're gonna head over there, pick one up, toss it together, and that should complete the clicky steering shaft operation bit of business.
find it. A dealership. I believe. Yep, there we are. There's there's Toyota. So we're looking for parts department. Parts, 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 parts. Silence GPS. I know where I'm going. Alright, that's collision center. Hmm. Sales and service. It's gotta be over here. According to the sign. Ah, there's salesmen lurking. They're about to pull up on me and be like, hey, you wanna buy a Toyota? This guy doesn't know where they're going. There we go. I go to the other side of the building. And I believe parts is over there. Okay, I've pulled up and parked. I don't see the service department or the uh, the parts department. There's service right there. So I'm just gonna assume that parts is inside of service. So I'm gonna head in there and uh, we're gonna go fetch these uh, these little bushings and whatnot. Get back to shop, get that car fixed. Very good, thank you, sir. Well, that was super easy. The, the guy at the parts desk had the thing pulled out and he was waiting on me. Just because I called and I said I was coming to get it. I love it when things just go flawlessly and without worry. It's the best. Restarting the engine. So here's our components. We've got the, uh, the old one with the little uh, bushing green business broken away and falling out of it. And then we've got the new one right over here, which uh, is not broken. So let's go ahead and head back to the shop, get this guy installed, and then we'll recheck for our clicking banging noises. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna be so mad if we put this thing in and that's not it and it's still making that clicking noise. That will, uh, that will disturb me greatly. Cause it's like, hey, congratulations. You spent all this time and effort you found the problem, or a problem, but you didn't find the problem, and I need to find the problem. But this is also how we learn, because you make an error such as this, or if this were to be an error type of situation, uh, then next time around you know better, and you don't make that same mistake twice, and that's not cool. Look at that. The, uh... Huh. Their tire sales sign blew over and smacked into the Jeep right there because the sandbags are on the wrong side. Oops. Yeah, so they hit their they hit their brand new Jeep with a 2x4. Hmm. I hope uh, someone figures that out. Why are you driving up on me, car? This is not a U-turn lane. This is a something else. I'm just going to sit here for a while because I don't want to pull out and get run over which is not the way more steam hello old dealership Goodbye, old dealership. Ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, that used to be my section over there, fleet department. I don't work there anymore. One chapter closes, another opens. Kind of busy over here. I see the train still has the road blocked off. And when we left, like a half hour ago, the train also was running. So I guess Tropican is a, uh, or CSX or whoever is doing whatever they're doing over there. I suppose they're uh, pretty busy today. Uh, regardless, we're back at the shop. I'm gonna pull in and eat some chicken. And then uh, we're gonna go back to getting the steering column uh, put back together. Get on with it. All right, back in my service drive, parking the auto. Powering down. Let's go get after it. 
Okay, let's get prepped up and ready to put this back together. Uh, I'm gonna need to take some compressed air here and blow out the debris from inside of this unit. We don't want that debris flying around. Just get in there nice and deep like. A little bit of air pressure. Turn that some. Get the motor. Cool, nice and shiny in there. All right, so let's grab the uh, little bushing. We'll fit the bushing in, flip the motor over, bolt the motor back on, then the column can go back up, then we can plug it all in, and then we can turn the thing on, and uh, fingers crossed, hopefully uh, that noise is going to be no more. So let's see here, we're gonna take our little bushing business and fit it in between little ribs and grooves and whatnot it goes in there and this little piece rides in the middle i'm not really certain what this was doing in there uh, but it did in fact come inside of there so we're just gonna we're just gonna put it right back where i found it i think it's probably best okay so now take the motor flip this thing over and we'll get it lined up with its bolt holes Ow. and set up into position here Don't fall, guys. Don't fall. Oh, there we go. It all slipped into position there. Good. So now, I'm going to take the, uh, well, the bolts here, or the two bolts, rather, and get these guys started. There goes the time clock. Do -do -do. Doo, doo, doo. It's not exactly the phone, but it's kind of like the phone. Close as I can get, I suppose. Come on, baby, go. There we go. Thread it down. And now the one in the back, I can kind of thread that with some more confidence since I know the motor's not going to pop out. There we go. Oh, this is good. Beautimus. So let's see. Let's grab my 12 again. Do, 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 do. No, I got you doing it. Look at that. That's the best. Let's get some torque on these two fasteners here. And then we'll put this column click back where it goes. The one on the back, that's it. Kind of tougher to reach. Let this down some. There. Back and forth and forth and back and making it tight and snugging it up. There we go. One more. Ah, clickage. Very good. Okay. So now, I'm going to pick the column up and set this thing back in on these two studs right here so let's see this guy's got to go back in its home like so right there and we had an insert that fell out earlier that's going to go right there right yeah get in there insert that's so the uh the bolt can't crush the plastic better okay so now I need to pick up the column and kind of set that into position here let me fetch one of the nuts it's still attached at the shaft at the bottom by the way so what I'm gonna do is 
drop my insert. Thread in one of the nuts so the thing can't fall out. There we go. Whew, okay, that's secure-ish. And I'll grab that insert in the other nut, the left side, and then we can put the big through bolt in at the bottom. That's the plan. It's out of alignment again. Get in there, insert. Right about, it's right about, I'm gonna deal with that in a second because I'd rather put the big bolt in so the stupid thing stops uh, flopping around. Yeah, so I'll just circle back to that thing, uh, sucky style, in a little while. Because right now I need, I need this guy in. Whew, it's getting warm down here. Come on, big bolt. See that goes there. It's gonna wiggle this column around so. There we go, bolts in. I need to line up the back side and just get it to start to thread into that uh, that welded captured nut right there. Whoo, baby. Oh, warm. Oh. Ow, sideways. I'm laying with my, my back sideways in the business here. Kinda, kinda hurts after a second. Anyway, got the bolt in. Let's get it threaded. Once she goes in, we're golden here. Then we can get the other top nuts in place. Once that guy's all set up, we'll put the Retainer nut back on the column down there. Then we can uh, get everything plugged back in. Oop, drop my tool. Still clicking away at that big bolt. It's a slow going process due to the limited amount of uh, flangey space down here. I had to take the uh, the brake light switch out just to. Just be able to reach in there enough to put action against uh, against that fastener. So this whole time the brake lights have been uh, turned on, but no matter. I'm sure we'll uh, get it all back together soon enough. Okay, I feel this uh, bolt getting a little tight, which is good. Come on, baby. Yeah, as soon as that thing snugs up, we'll hit it with the wrench down there, apply final torque. And then it's all reassembly from here forward. The easy part. Okay, we're getting tight. Getting tighter. Ugh. About as tight as I'm gonna get it. Flip that around to tightening mode. There we go. So now, get that guy back up into the hole there on the fastener. good might as well throw this 12 mil back in there while we're while we're sitting here that's good and impact gun with the 12 on it let's just get this guy tight real quick like while we're here I probably didn't actually have to take that off, but I thought I was pulling the entire column out too. Click. Okay, that's all in good shape. Now, two more fasteners here and here. Okay, one more. 12 right here. 
just need an extension. Okay, 12 coming in. Bottom of the column here. Another one over here. Very nice. So the column is now in position. So let's go back down below again and get the wires reconnected. We'll plug in the uh, sensors and all that good stuff that I've removed. The harness is back into place. There we go. Let's see what order is my order that I'm in. Yellow wire, that's for, uh, oh, what's that gonna be? Airbag. Yellow is for airbag. White one goes in right there. This little black one goes in right here. That's all the steering column wires. That's all good. All good in the hood. So now, we need to get, see that one's airbag, OBD2. Uh, where oh where has my brake lamp switch gone to? Gotta get that guy in next. Let's see here. I think she's, there she is hiding out right there. It's the brake light switch. I'm gonna feed it in to its little bracket right here. If I can reach it properly. We're gonna push it in until it depresses against the little lever right there. See that lever? So it's a normally uh, closed switch and when you release the pedal, it opens the switch, turns the lights on. So we need to get this guy down and in. It's not lining up, there we go. Okay, so it's lined up. We're gonna push it in until it depresses the button. See that? And then we'll rotate it to lock it in now brakes are off but when we hit the pedal it releases that little little switch mechanism inside and that's what turns the uh, brake lights on so it's on off on off on off okay steering column and bezel are going back together next so we'll put the upper piece on and snap that in with the little tab clips that it had then the lower piece can slip this guy into position and again snap it all back together. So that one goes there. We just kind of push these little clamshell pieces together as they line up. They should just snap right into place. That one's there. Got that one. Good. Same thing here on the other side. Just push the two halves together. They snap in and they auto align with the column. So that's good to go. Now let's see this piece. This one went under the buttons. So line this guy up like so. Snap that in. Very good. Or not, forgot the, the vent. Pull that back out, put the vent in. Snap the vent in. There we go, that piece goes there. Then this one goes in after this little guy down here. So let me get this one in position. Line it up, snap it in, good. This one here, line it up, snap it in, also good. We have power. Let's turn the AC back on. System energized, yeah, everybody's plugged in, so we can turn the air on. That's good. Give me cold, thank you. Getting a little sweaty in here and I don't wanna sweat all over my guy's Prius. I swear this thing's gotta have like a bad accumulator or something. I'm not sure what the dealio is with all that uh, all that business down there. Uh, uh oh, airbag lights on because I left uh, one of the airbags disconnected. And yeah, there's the connector right there. It's for the knee bolster airbag. No matter, we'll get it. Okay, airbag connector. 
reconnected. And yeah, I did shut the vehicle down to make the airbag connections. We're not gonna we're not gonna blow this thing up in my face or anything like that. Put that wire back inside its little, little bracket right there. Snap that guy in. Now we can maneuver this bag assembly back up into its column area right here and then bolt it in. Okay, that's one of the top bolts right there. And the second top bolt goes in way, 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 way back there. You can barely even see it. Come here, light. There. Okay, that top bolt's in. Got two more go in down here at the bottom. One right here. Oh, here, let's run the uh, OBD connection through while we're at it. Connect that right there. Okay, bottom bolt. Let's get this guy lined up. That one there. And then the fourth one. And back over there in that corner. Beautiful. Okay, a couple tens and... That one fell out. Guess I didn't have it threaded in as much as I would have liked now, did I? I'll go back in and get it no matter. Right through the hole here. Kickage. And right, I'll just shove my hand right in there. Kind of deep like. There we go, okay. Airbag is secure. Push the tabs back in. Good, okay, so the steering column does a little shroud business. That guy goes in next, since we're just uh, kind of working around it and on top of it. Slide this guy back together here. It's got two little plastic nuts. Push those back over the studs. Go. That thing's in. A couple wires left over, and a couple panels. I think that's uh, gonna about complete this uh, section of the operation here. Ah, there it is. That's the that's the one that I was looking for. A little hidden guy. So yeah, this one. This one's plugging in right here. Then the green one plugged in right there that's the one we were looking for Little green guy yep Oop, i knocked the switch out get back in there switch kickage switch kickages okay okay so now line this panel back up snap it all into position here and that leaves us with one more panel down here and just a couple more connectors to reconnect um, a lot of these connectors I found that are actually blanks like this uh, see this yellow and I'm sorry white and blue one This one just connects to that hole right there. So that would mean That this harness is here set up uh, For certain Yodas that have features That are not particularly or not equipped on this particular vehicle Get that guy plugged in there Very nice. Okay, we'll take this panel, snap it into its home position here. And then we've got a couple eight mils. We've got one right here. It's gonna screw this panel into position. That way it does not uh, fall out while we're driving on our toes. Kickage. Beautiful. And the last eight mil. Gravity, flashlight style. Last eight mil goes over here on the right hand side. Get that guy started and screwed into position. We'll go ahead and back this thing out and 
see if our little clicking bit of business noise is uh, finally gone here. Ah, get on there. Get in there. There we go. Okay, so columns back together. It's hung up. Everybody's connected. All the panels are on. Let's get the flashing lights out of the cabin here so we can drive again. And we're gonna double check on our nasty clicky noise. Okay, airbag lights are off. Parking brake disengaged. Let me hit the brake pedal. Parking brake off. No warning lights except for my seat belt. So we'll click that guy on just to shut off one more warning illuminator. Good to go. Reverse. Let's go over some bumps and listen for a rattle. Fingers crossed, guys. Did we get it? Hope we got it, because that was a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work, a lot of risk, a lot of time, drove across town, etc., etc. Let's see what we get here. Back in drive. And there's a whole boatload of bumps up here in the parking lot. We'll run, a, run those over. Oh yeah. Nice and quiet like. Not one click, rattle, bang, pop, shimmy, nada. I think that's a success. Cool. Yep, nothing here over this part of the lot. We got it. That's the end of that abnormular banging, clicking noise. Yeah. Oh yeah. All kinds of rattles in that steering column. Beautiful. All right, guys, uh, headed back into the shop yet again, driving on the wrong side of the road. That's okay. We in the hood, I can do that. And uh, I'm gonna swing this back into the shop. Um, naturally, I've gotta diagnose uh, what's going on with that brake pedal noise when we're at a stoplight. Uh, however, uh, due to the length of this video and the content uh, therein, I'm gonna have to save that for a uh, different type of episode. So uh, having said all that, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every single one of you guys for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'd like to uh, convey my sincerest gratitude and appreciation for you being here, especially since you're here all the way to the end. Uh, since you are here all the way to the end, I'm going to assume you like this video. Uh, if in fact my assumption is correct, I would only ask of you to communicate that to me effectively by tapping that like button down below. Uh, do not forget to drop me a comment or two while you're down there. Considering subscribing to the channel, if you have not already. And before I go, the only other thing I have to remind myself to remind you is to not forget to wish you guys a fantastic day. So, again, as always, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one. Take care, in a video, in a Prius, in a transmission, in a day.